Hello all. I am Siddharth Kaul and I welcome you to Edupedia World. In this video, we are going to take a closer look into the class of structure. So first we will look into how to create a structure. A structure is a data type that groups related data using containers called fields. Each field can contain data of any type or any size. For example, we can store a patient's record in a scalar structure with fields. We can have the name of the patient, billing, amount and the test results for the patient. Here we have three fields, a name field that contains data of string, a billing field that contains amount to be deducted, that is the 127, then a test field that has some array of data pertaining to some test results. We can add records for other patients to the array by including subscripts after the array name. As shown here, I have used subscript 2 to add another set of fields of name, billing and test result with some name and billing amount and some test data. When we display the structure patient in command line, we get a 1 cross 2 structure array with fields name, billing and test. In the diagram, we can see that the structure is an array of size 2. This structure has information about patient 1 and patient 2 and each patient has its own field of name, billing and test. We can access the data in the structure array to find how much the first patient owes and to create a bar graph of his test results. We can access the billing field using the dot field name operator as highlighted in yellow. So we'll have a patient 1 then the dot operator followed by the field name that is the billing. We can also display the test data of the patient in the bar graph as highlighted in blue. Again we are referring to test field using the dot notation. So we get a bar graph something similar to shown here. Access in data in a structure. Now using a built-in matrix file I am going to show how to access the contents of a structure array. I have loaded a clown.mat file which is nothing but a structure with three fields that is X, map and caption. Using the dot notation I am going to access the field X and map and show what has been loaded. So what has been loaded is an image of clown. So using image calling the image function and passing the X parameter of the structure S and using the color map of S.map I am getting the image as shown here. We can also access only a part of a field instead of a whole field. As shown here, using appropriate indices for the size, we can access only a small portion of the image. Here I have accessed a small upper left corner of the clown image. So I have put some size like 1 to 50 and 1 to 80. So we will have like 80 fields on the x axis and 50 fields on the y axis. Concatenate the structures. Just like numeric and characters and other classes that we have seen, we can concatenate structures in the similar way. So using concatenate operator that is a square brackets, I have shown here how we can concatenate structures. Here I have a structure 1 with fields A and B with content of string first in A and array 1, 2, 3, uh, array with elements 1, 2, 3 in B. Similarly, I have structure 2 with fields A and B with string second in A and a random number in a field B. Now I have concatenated structure 1 and structure 2 with square brackets into a single combined structure called combine. So when we view combine, we get a 1 cross 2 structure array with fields A and B. This combine becomes the new structure in itself. So we can access the fields inside it just like any other structure using a dot notation followed by the field name. Generating field names from variables. Apart from giving a static name to our fields in a structure, we can also give dynamic names to the structure fields. By dynamic, I mean that the fields will be created on the go. The syntax for the same is highlighted in yellow. Most common use is when we want to club certain array and mark them with dates. So shown here, I have a, created a dynamic field using the current date and then I am storing some array data into it. This is the most common example there is. There are all lots of ways this can be used. This is just one of the many ways. This completely depends on what application we have and how we want our data to be stored and manipulated. So in here we can sh see that uh, I have dynamically created a field with current date that is July 29th and stored the array with elements 1, 2, 3 in it.
Now, data in nested structure. Structure can be nested under each other. The syntax for accessing the data in a particular field in a nested structure is shown in the first line. We have the master structure and its index, then a dot notation, followed by a nested structure and its index, then again a dot notation, and finally the field name to be accessed with, it, with its indices. When a structure is a scalar, that is when it is still one by one as shown in the first three lines on the left side, we do not need to include the indices to refer to the single element. Here I have created a scalar structure S where field N is nested scalar structure with fields A, B and C. Now I am going to expand the structure S so that both S and N are non-scalar that is 1 by 2. So now after I have added the data to structure S and N as shown here my data will look something like in this diagram. So here we have first element of S containing two elements N1 and N2 and inside N1 we have three fields A, B, C and N2 also has three fields A, B, C. All these three fields contain some sort of array and data. Then we have second element of S again containing two elements of structure N1 and N2 and each containing three fields A, B, C and each having some sort of data. We can access any part of the array by referring to first structure S then structure N and then the field name. As shown in the code at the right, I have accessed field B of the second element in the N within the first element of S. Our command looks something like S1 that is the structure S element 1 of structure S followed by dot notation then N2 that is the element 2 of structure N followed by dot notation by field name B with uh, first two elements of column and rows which is nothing but the upper 2 by 2 version of field B. Now ways to organize data in structure array. There are at least two ways in which we can organize data in structure array. First is plain organization and second is element by element organization. Now which method suits best, best uh, depends on how we are planning to access the data and whether we have system memory constraint for very large data sets. So this completely depends on application and about how much memory we are having and how much large the data set is. The plain organization allows easier access to all the values within a field. Whereas the element by element organization allows easier access to all information related to a single element or record. Now plain organization. Let's take an example for plain organization. Consider an RB, RGB image with three arrays corresponding to color intensity values, namely for red, green and blue. As we have these red, green and blue values, it is easier to put this in a structure named image that uses plain organization. So we will have a structure image having three fields, red, green and blue. This allows us to easily extract entire image planes for display, filtering or other processing. For example, in the last line in code, I have multiplied the red intensity values by 0.9. In cases where we have multiple images, we can add them into image structure so that each element of image structure array contains an entire image. Now element by element organization. Let's take an example for element by element organization. Consider a database with patient information. Each record contains data for patient names, test results and billing amount. We have added two data for two patients namely John Doe and Anne Lay. Element by element organization supports simple indexing to access data for a particular patient. For example, say to find the average of the first patient's test results, we will be calculating the average by rows rather than by columns. Hence returning the values as shown in bottom. So we get values like 75, 178 and 212 that are nothing but the average value of first row, second row and the third row. Memory requirements for a structure array. Structure arrays do not require completely contiguous memory. This means that memory allocation for structure array as a whole need not be continuous. However, each field of the structure requires contiguous memory as does the header that is created by MATLAB to describe the array. In simple language, each field described in structure requires a continuous memory allocation. We can allocate memory for contents by assigning initial values 
with the structure function as demonstrated in the first line of code. So we call a structure function, then we allocate memories a dot once, then b dot zero, and c dot random values. In case we prefer not to assign initial values, we can initialize the structure array by assigning empty arrays to each field of the last element in the structure array as shown in the last line of the code. So we have a new structure of with size 2550.a and we are assigning it with empty array. Similarly, we are doing with field B and field C. This concludes our video on structures. In the next video, we are going to take a uh, closer look into the cell array class. Until then, please subscribe and thanks for watching.